The arrival of Arlecchino has definitely caused a lot of discussions within the player base, and there's a few important things that need to be addressed in this video. So, after some time had passed since Arlecchino's banner release, it seems like a lot of surprising things have been revealed, not just about her, but also provided a deeper insight about ourselves as a community. I mean, to put it simply, the majority of players can agree that Arlecchino packs some serious punch thanks to her front-loaded damage, but at the same time, there is that lingering problem of her survivability. And you can see for yourself when watching the majority of content creator videos, most of them are running Arlecchino alongside Zhongli, so does that mean she's not good without him? Well, the reality is, it depends. If you can dodge without dying, then shielding is really just a comfort thing. And this has always been the case, and in fact, if you do opt out from using a shielder, that means you can also run a unit that can provide offensive support, like off-field damage, buffing, or both. And I mean, look, if she goes up against something like Triple Mago Kenki, then yeah, it's gonna be a struggle, unless you're really good at dodging, and you're okay with wasting precious time surviving the onslaught of attacks coming from this annoying trio. Because remember, usually when you switch back to Arlecchino, she's got all those buffs active, so you need to utilize them ASAP. Still, this leaves us with a big question. What teammates are currently most reliable for her, aside from the Rax Lapis guy? Well, before we talk about this, some good news for me. So, I have some great news. Me, Mtash, I went to lose in PyCon, ended up claiming second place in the Galaxy Battles Genshin Impact Grand Finals, which means I also get to share the $9,000 prize pool we won with you guys. And it's all thanks to Samsung Galaxy for sponsoring today's video. And I gotta say, it was a really fun event. We had some crazy moments like this epic battle against Pyro Regisvine, but the catch was we were only able to use travelers of different elements. Like, I really enjoyed this because this was also the first time I got to stream, as well as meet my favorite content creators, and I really think we did pretty well as a team. And as you can see, we were all playing on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, and honestly, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor easily carried the game with low temps and high performance on highest settings. But besides playing Genshin on the S24 Ultra, I had a ton of fun using the powerful 200 megapixel camera, which allowed me to take some great pictures. But what's even cooler is that you can move or remove the objects and fill in empty spaces when editing the photos, thanks to generative edit with Galaxy AI. So make sure to level up your gameplay by learning more about about the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and purchase it by using my link in the description. And of course, don't forget that I'm also giving away half of what I want to you guys, which is over $1,000, so check out the link in the description to enter the giveaway. Okay, back to Arlecchino's reliable teammates. Honestly, since Zhongli is considered to be the premium shielder, since he can provide that amazing minus 20% resistance shred, every other shielder is then considered to be good for a specific situation. For example, Diona and Layla can be great for providing decent crab application, which can result in some freeze and melt reactions, although usually Layla will be better at this. However, if you do have C6 Diona, she can provide that beefy 200 elemental mastery boost with her burst, which is great because running cryo support and vaporize teams means father can easily take advantage of that boost and increase her vape damage by quite a lot. On the other hand, when it comes to Pyro Shielders, Toma and C4 Yenfei can both work in either Mono Pyro or Overload comps, provided you need that shielding. C4 Yanfei especially can become a great deal for the Harbinger, since she can equip Thrilling Tails and provide that massive attack boost, which can especially become super relevant if Arlequino is fighting with White Tassel, which, as everyone knows by now, it offers excellent passive and sub stat, but the base attack is extremely low, so it needs to be compensated with attack buffs coming from someone like Benny's Burst or Thrilling Tales user. And then, surprisingly enough, even Electro can offer defensive options, although it's mostly Beto, since her burst can provide resistance to interruption and even shielding at C1. But okay, let's say Arlecchino doesn't need shielding, what then? Well, I found some really interesting showcases on YouTube, like this one here with Farina. You would think that because Arlecchino cannot be healed, it's not a great combo, but C2 Farina says otherwise. Check this video out, as one of the players completely demolish Abyss, and it only takes like 15 seconds to do this. Obviously, C2 Farina is not realistic for free-to-play players, and on top of that, Kazuha had Freedom Sworn. But still, some pretty interesting teams have started popping up on the net. And also, then there's Shen Yun, who can heal and enable plunging for the team. Surely, both of these benefits do not benefit Arlequino, right? Well, yes and no. Healing, of course, is useless for her. But those plunges can be weaved in, since when looking at the buffed normal attack multipliers, sometime later, the plunges can start to catch up in terms of damage output. So you could potentially spam more normal attacks and then switch to plunging. But is this efficient? Probably not, at least with a C0 team. However, it can work if you really want to use Shen Yun. 
So yeah, there's a bunch of great teammates Arlequino can utilize, and I think a lot of people are starting to realize that Zhongli isn't the only thing that allows her to stay alive and work well. He's more like a premium option for that comfort, and ironically, that's what he has been known for this whole time. However, there is something else that's being debated right now. Ah uh, yes, the usual question of the ages when it comes to discussing any new character. Should you go for a C1 Arlequino or her signature weapon? Well, the current consensus is that her first constellation is a better choice, for a few good reasons. Although the fact that this weapon can transform into a custom skin for Arlequino in the shape of a badass looking blood side is a huge selling point, at least to me. Now, don't get me wrong, the signature weapon can pack a massive punch. I've already done a showcase when I compared it against White Tassel, the improvement ranged from 25 to 35% damage increase. But even when comparing it against something like Staff of Scarlet Sands in a vaporized team, it can still provide almost 8 to 12% better damage, depending on the scenario. And we are talking about a 5 star stat stick that should be godlike for vaporized teams. And then for the teams that aren't vaping, such as Overload or Mono Pyro, this signature polearm can provide godlike damage improvements. However, the biggest problem with the Crimson Moon semblance is that it's too niche. Like seriously, nobody else can take advantage of the passive. Okay, scratch that. Any other polearm user right now will gain the 12% damage bonus from the passive, while Arlequino can gain 36% total. But even then, Jade Spear can provide almost the exact amount of viability and it's a standard banner weapon. Still, you could argue that maybe Hoyo will release a new character in the future who can add Bond of Life to their teammates, which then would make this weapon pretty good stat stick for any other polearm user. But that's just grasping straws at the moment. Because here's the thing, C1 actually provides a massive damage boost to Father. It's about 20 to 26% damage increase, although it's only for normal attacks, since this only improves the Mask of the Red Death multiplier. However, on top of that, she will now gain resistance to interruption while she has that pirate infusion. And this is a pretty huge deal for a lot of reasons. For example, this means she won't get knocked around as much when you're trying to unleash as many attacks as possible. So in return, this also means her damage per second improves. And then on top of that, this constellation also acts as a very strong stopping point. Seriously, anywhere you will look, people will tell you it's fine to stop at C1. Sure, the second constellation is also something that will alter her playstyle and provide a big new attack, but the first constellation has been accepted as the first upgrade that's worth pursuing if you want to vertically invest into Arlequino. Now, I personally don't like this new trend Hoyo is going for because Nivellet also received the same treatment where he can gain resistance to interruption from his C1 and I really hope this won't continue with future characters. Although on the flip side, I would say that for Arlequino, resistance to interruption is not as important as it is to Nivellet because he will literally stop casting his Hydro Laser. While with Arlequino, if you don't watch her HP bar closely, sure, she can withstand the interruption, but she might die. So the option to run a shielder still remains relevant even after obtaining her first constellation. But yeah, in terms of C1 versus signature weapon, it's really just better to go for the first constellation, unless you really can find a reason to utilize that polearm on somebody else. Now, the next big thing I want to talk about would be the current state of Arlequino's build. The new Fragment of Harmonic Whimsy set is her best in slot choice, that's a fact. But if you ask any serious Arlequino main, they will tell you that you can easily use Gladiator's set while you're busy farming for the new set because, in reality, the new Whimsy set is about 10% better than Gladiator's, give or take. And on top of that, if you've been playing the game for a long time now, it's very likely you have at least one 4-piece set of Gladiator's that you can slap an Arlequino and call it a day. Like, honestly, my farming for the new set has been pretty brutal. I did manage to obtain this 41 CV Feather, but the rest of the loot has been pretty underwhelming after spending about 3 thousand resin. So as you can imagine, I am using Gladiator set on my main account and it works really well. In fact, you could even go for Gilded Dreams 4 set if using her in Vaporized teams, or Lava Walker set if playing in Mono Pyro, or just literally use any two set combos shown here. Now, one more thing I quickly want to address would be the comparisons made to other characters in terms of DPS output. Thing is, we are time-gated by the new weekly boss materials, and it will take quite a few weekly resets before Arlequino's talents can be maxed out. Although, as somebody who has access to the media server, so far, I can tell you that after all the playtesting I did, in my opinion, I would say she's currently one of the best damage dealers. Not the best, but one of the best. Because overall, she accomplishes a lot of things. 
Amazing front-loaded damage means people who speedrun Abyss can easily utilize her, as I've already shown you that example footage before, while those who just want to chill in world exploration can actually do some nifty things like maintaining her pyro infusion in perpetuity, because it's very easy to take out the mobs while they have the mark and gain the most amount of bond of life. And of course, you can maintain the pyro infusion even when switching around characters, so she's always ready to annihilate enemies when you switch to her. So yeah, these are some of the things that people have been lately discussing about Arlecchino post-release, and I wanted to share them. Hopefully you found this video useful, and as always, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.